Hello, my name is Angie Fairweather, and I am the Director of Educational Technology Services at New College, referred to as ETS. And in this presentation, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what we do and what we can offer your students. So let's take a moment to take a look at some of the ways that ETS can help your students be successful in your class and at New College. And so one of our functions is we have technology equipment available for faculty and staff for academic purposes. So if you have a project coming up in your class, please let your students know about us. We have video cameras, digital cameras with really high quality. We have different audio recording equipment, GoPros, um, this is a really nice selection. So um, that way students don't feel like they have to be limited on their creativity by just the technology equipment that they own. So send them our way. They can tell us about their project and then we can recommend certain equipment and then we'll also train them on how to use the equipment. In the media lab, we have a section located in the library. We have a section of Mac computers that are fully loaded with Adobe Creative Cloud, which is fantastic. There's about 30 apps currently as part of the Creative Cloud um, from everything from Photoshop to different movie making apps such as uh, Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro. So that is available for student use. They can just drop in anytime. And then we also have SketchUp on the Macs as well. And SketchUp is a fantastic 3D modeling tool. So you can come up with some really great projects using SketchUp. Um, we also provide training for this software in the lab and then other software by request. So um, students can come in and see us if they need some help, um, perhaps with Word while they're working on their thesis, or maybe you notice a student that's struggling a bit with Excel, um, send them to us. We can work one-on-one -on -one with them, give them some training sessions. And um, if you have another piece of software that you would like to use or application in your classroom, just reach out to us and we'll work with you. We can do in-class tutorials or we can just have students come to our lab and, and we can help them on a small group or one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, we also have a poster printer here in the lab. So if you have, say, for a final project, you want students to create, say, an academic poster or perhaps they're presenting at a conference, um, the poster printer is available for students for, um, you know, final projects. They have to have a faculty member uh, let us know that it is for a classroom final project. So now we're going to take a look at some of the things that you can do as a professor in Canvas that can help your students be successful. So when you look at this slide, this is what students see when they first log in. This is referred to as a dashboard and we have this middle section. These are called the course cards and they have one for each one of the classes that has been published. And then you'll notice on the left hand side, they have the main features of Canvas and on the right hand side, their to do list. So I wanted to point out here, one of the things I talk with students is make sure that they are checking their email. Um, as you can see here, the student has five unread emails. A lot of them don't know what that number means. Um, next thing is this to do list that students have is generated when you apply a due date on an assignment or an activity. So really when you are creating assignments, when you add a due date to the assignment, it puts Canvas to work. It'll add the due date to the student's to-do list and it will also add the due date on the student's calendar. So that's really gonna help new students stay organized and manage their, their work. Um, also on their dashboard, you can see right here, any kind of recent feedback that you post in Canvas, they're gonna get a notification right when they log in. Besides assignments, you can also add to-do list on Canvas pages. So here you can see, here's just some instructions um, on a Canvas page, practice quiz, uh, for example, and there's a check, check box under the options to add to the students to-do where you can designate a due date. And this will add that right to the student's dashboard and let them know that that's something that they need to get done for the course. So we're gonna shift gears a little bit now, and I wanted to point out some things that you can do in Canvas to help your students be successful. So you can see we are now logged in as Harry Potter. So when students log in, this is their view. It's a, it's a bit different than instructors would see. So you'll see over um, on a few things that I want to point out. 
here we can see that they have an inbox and the five tells us they have five unread emails. So I'd like to point that out to teach it to students that, you know, this number means you haven't read that email yet. And that could come from a professor. So you really need to be checking those. Um, you can also see over on the right hand side, the to do list uh, list all the assignments that have been given due dates uh, for the student. And then finally, at the bottom, there's recent feedback. So any kind of feedback, any assignment that's been graded and comments have been left, the students will be notified that as well. So the reason why I want to point this out is the to do list um, assignments will not get added to the to do list unless you put a due date on the assignment. So if you you're adding due dates to your assignments, that's really going to put canvas to work for you and help students stay organized because it'll notify them hey, you got to get this done. So really consider using those due dates and um, that will help also populate the student's calendar in Canvas as well if they happen to be using the calendar that's available. So in Canvas, when students click on their grades page, instead of seeing a grade book like you would as a teacher, they will get a list of all of their assignments in their course and they can choose on how they arrange the view. Um, but I did want to point out um, here, they're not going to see all the feedback. To see the feedback, they're going to have to click on the assignment title. When students select show rubric, then it'll open up the rubric view and students will see any comments left. And when students select the show feedback, it'll open up the SpeedGraders doc view and they'll see any annotations that their instructor has added. They're also able to reply to those comments and download those uh, annotated comments as well. There is step-by-step -step guides available for students that you can add right into your course in the first year seminar leadership resources area. Um, there's a video that will describe to students exactly how to access all of their grading feedback. So when Dan presented to us, he talked about effective feedback had six elements and using the acronym TRUDAT, um, he suggested the T stood for timely, that it was important that feedback happened very quickly. R being that it is relevant, that it stays exactly in alignment with um, the objective of the assignment, that it is understandable, that it is digestible, or not too much at one time, it's accurate, and it's also thought provoking. So thinking about these first four elements, um, when I think about Canvas, it really was clear that one of the best ways to satisfy these four components would be to use a rubric. So with rubrics, you can have uh, criteria and you can make them to where they have points or they don't have points. But while it takes some time in the front end to develop these rubrics, it will save a lot of time when you're actually doing your grading. So that's really going to help with that timely and relevant when you're adding feedback. And for each criteria, it helps kind of keep you on track and the students understand the connection. And that also will put it in chunks to help it make it more understandable. Another bonus for using rubrics is that in the rubric comments area, you can paste URLs and they will be clickable. Normally when you post a comment into the comments area of grading feedback, it's a student would have to copy and paste it into their browser to be able to go there. Whereas when you add it to a rubric, it will add it as um, completely just clickable so the student can access further information that you provide. I also wanted to show there's an option in rubrics to add free form comments. And this can be a great time saver for instructors. Once they add that option in, what it will do will give you the ability to type a comment, but then you get this checkbox that you can choose to save the comment for reuse. And so basically you'll get a whole drop down menu of comments that you can use, which is fantastic when you import the assignment um, into a course the assignment comments will come with it. So um, that can really help you be more timely on your grading feedback um, and just kind of a, a really fantastic workflow. 
So if you need any help with anything, please reach out to us at Educational Technology Services. We can work with you one-on-one -on, -one on Canvas or another application that you'd like help with. And um, feel free to drop by my office anytime. I'm located Office 121 in the library.